Hey, what's up everybody? EXO coming at you here, about to get our hands dirty, diving back into the ever popular, but sometimes controversial, Rockville K9 Sub. Now, in order to get the full story here, we gotta go back to the start, March of 2018. You see, the first time I ever made a video about this sub, it was totally because of the hype. I'll be the first to admit it. Everyone was talking about them, wondering about them, even asking if they were physically real because of how cheap they were. You know that feeling, right? Like something's almost too good to be true, but you don't wanna miss out on it either way. That's basically what made me buy them, pure curiosity. And I think that's also why the first video just took off like it did. And sure, that's great from a YouTube standpoint, but holy crap, not so much when things go wrong. Shortly after the first video, defects started popping up from other people online. As you see, I didn't go overrated. And there's the smoke. And unfortunately, I wasn't far behind either. As you can tell by this blown up version one, things didn't exactly work out for us. And just to add insult to injury, my girlfriend was the one who blew it up. What the? And she doesn't even like loud bass. She was just cruising along at low volume and bam, goodbye K9. Uh, something wasn't right. So as the weeks went on, more people started having problems and eventually Rockville just addressed the issue publicly. They explained that the version ones could use some improvements like coils to handle higher heat and all of those changes would be implemented on the next batch, the version twos, nearly a year later. Needless to say, at this point last year, I was not very pleased with my purchase. And I spent like 500 bucks buying extra sizes for YouTube giveaways. So with the first video still getting tons of views, most people watching had no idea about any of this. To them, it still looked like a flawless gem. So I had to say something. I didn't want people to be disappointed like I was. So I posted another video explaining what happened, like how my sub blew up just like some of the other unlucky ones and how I'm just a regular paying customer too. I couldn't really do anything about it either. Really sucked because that's a lot of money to spend on a bunch of could be duds. But there is some good news after all this crap. Rockville ended up taking care of everybody that had a defect and sent us over a replacement 15 inch sub, which I thought was pretty cool. So in the spirit of giving, we are gonna give this sub away to somebody watching right now. That brings us to today, a full year later, and you've gotta be wondering, are the new K9 version twos any different now? Are they actually better than the version ones? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out once and for all. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so we'll start out with a quick side-by-side -side comparison. This is the version one on your left and the version two on your right. Now, at first glance, they pretty much look exactly the same, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You got this textured cone, just like before, stitching around the surround with the same exact bulge and everything. But I did notice something a little strange that is updated on the spec sheet, which says it has a new dust cap, an ultra stiff dust cap. But I gotta say, after giving it the good old push test, it feels exactly the same. I cannot believe that that is an updated dust cap. But of course, that's nitpicking. It still has the same rubber gasket with some good quality glue beads running down the lip. So let's check out the improvements they made to the version twos to make a better voice coil. Supposedly, you know, they, they fixed all the problems. So let's go ahead and take a gander here. Now I do gotta say, right out of the gate, you can tell the coating is much smoother. On the version one, there's this residue, almost like this flaking that's happening, and this has never been powered. But if you look on the version two, it's a much smoother roll, almost like the coating that was applied was done in a much better way. Oh, and check this out. Do you see how the ventilation holes on the former there, you can see the pole just behind it? Well, on the version twos, you have to press the sub in almost an eighth of an inch just to be able to see the top of the pole. And if you look at the amount of space there is between the top of the winding and the beginning of that hole, it's larger on the version two. They definitely did reconfigure some stuff and do a new rewrap and it looks to be on the same former. That's why it looks pretty much the same, but you really gotta pay attention. One of the more obvious changes and one you probably noticed right away, 
No more direct leads. Oh, sorry guys, if you're a big fan of them, we got push terminals now, and I'm curious to know, what do you prefer? Do you prefer direct leads with wires sticking out of your woofer, or do you prefer terminated connections with terminals? But everything else is pretty much looking the same. Same vented motor structure, same spider assembly with sewn in tinsel leads, blah, blah, blah. It looks like we've covered it. Direct leads have changed, the voice coil has changed, same former, and the dust cap has not changed, even though it says that it has. I'm trying to get past that one. So let's now have some fun with testing this. Testing, testing, testing. As you can see, we got both subs pumping away, looking pretty solid there. And I've been messing around for a few minutes already. Not one bit surprised at what I found. Check this out. Tell me if you notice anything in the next 15 seconds. Pay really close attention. Did you notice anything a little strange? Well, the difference in coil positions are resulting in different excursion rates, especially above 40 hertz. I mean, check it out. The version ones are moving visibly more. And on top of that, we're somehow seeing slightly less heat buildup on the newer voice coil. But PU fellas, our buddy on the left is already stinking up pretty bad. What the hell? I seriously can't believe how these subs ever got their power ratings, though the version two appears to be better, even they don't seem totally prepared for a 1200 watt smack in the face or 5000 watts peak. Side note, if you listen closely, the V1 has now started making this odd mechanical noise. Ah, isn't that wonderful? We'll go ahead and end the free air portion here and switch over to a ported box so we can turn it up even more. We just gotta remember to ignore some of the mistakes on the paperwork because for some reason it says 2,500 watts on here and gives you wildly incorrect diagrams for wiring the subwoofers in parallel. Better hope your amp has a good protection circuit if you follow these directions, fellas. So we'll just ignore all that and assume the 15 is rated for 1250 watts. Oh boy, I'm a little bit nervous. Let's see how she handles full rated power. a lot sooner than I thought it would. Blowing up smoke just like R12 did last year. Holy crap. We stayed within a rated power range and still blew the damn thing? Pfft, doubts are freaking rising. So I really, really hope the version two can at least outperform this poor thing. Look at her, she's freaking puffing up real bad. second mark. No smoke show yet. Wait a minute. What the hell? She's starting to stink up too, guys. And what are we like, 35 seconds into this? I'll stop in another 15. 
15 seconds or so because she is going to blow if we stay at this volume much longer. Whew, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's turn that down before it's too late. We still want to test the SPL of this later, so we don't want to waste our coils on something that's clearly about to happen. Bottom line, the Rockville K9 stub still appears to be overrated and kind of misleading to customers like you and me. Yeah, sure, great. It can play five times longer than the V1 before blowing chunks, but five times longer than 10 seconds is still a huge disappointment. It already smells like shit. And we just have to sit here and believe whatever they say on the box. No siree, not this time around. There is no doubt in my mind, this right here, the V2 will blow if you put full rated power to it. It just so happens to take a little bit longer this time around, but even then, one minute is just not enough. So we'll let her cool off for a while and switch gears into the 12 inch size in the meantime. We got our infamous Sasquatch box sitting right here on the floor, ready for some TLC. This is our subwoofer box, 1.8 cubic feet after subwoofer and bracing displacement. And we have a six inch adjustable port from Big Ass Ports. Now, if you're new to the channel or just stopping by, hey, how's it going? You're probably asking yourself, why on earth does this dude's sub box look like it rolled down a freaking mountain? Looks like total crap. Well, I'd have to agree with you on that one. Everything kind of went downhill after that stupid repair shop messed everything up. But before all that, it looked pretty damn sweet. The original build is right here on YouTube and so far over 1 million people have watched it. But here we are today with scratches and gouges, smears of glue, and even a little bit of angle iron from some skateboard tricks we did out in the driveway. Long story short, this box has been abused. So today, we'll try our best to bring her back to life for testing the Rockville with a fresh haircut and some black carpet. Right along looking pretty good with the black carpet and we're gonna start wiring the sub really simple we're gonna do everything in parallel now this is going to an NVX 3k amplifier I know I'm already gonna get roasted in the comments saying this kid's just gonna blow up this subwoofer too with a 3000 watt amplifier no wonder it happened last time right well that's not really the case you could have a 10,000 watt amplifier hooked up in your car governed down to an appropriate level and never harm a 1,000 watt or even a 500 watt subwoofer. Now, just in case anything does go wrong, I don't wanna be blamed for not properly breaking in the subwoofer. Even though most people would say that's just something that happens naturally, not something you actually go out and do. But either way, we'll avoid all those comments with a full 12 hour break in time. Oh my gosh, look at what we've become and we'll do it all on roughly half power. So let's go ahead and turn up the volume and use our screwdriver to adjust the gain on the amplifier with this meter. Now, as you can see, we're putting out 23 watts right now, but if we slowly adjust this pot, that will increase. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Bring her up to 500 watts. There's 100, 300 watts, and a little bit, there we go, a little bit less. There we go, right around 500 watts. And as you can see, we're not pushing anything too far. Our O-scope still has a smooth waveform, so we'll stretch her out real good on some low notes and begin the break-in process. Let's get crazy.
definitely making some bass, guys. Listen to my garage. Every single thing is flexing. We got the fluorescence flexing. Destructo mode. Hovering right around that 500 watts, Mark. Looking good. Oh yeah, she's taking those lows pretty nice too. I definitely don't think we can get away with 12 hours of that, especially at those frequencies. So we'll try to drop it down maybe into the upper 20s and lower 30s. And we're gonna do it on video, a little time-lapse video with this clock. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it right inside here. And we're gonna do some ping pong sweeps just like we were just doing on video. Hopefully the cops don't get called for 12 hours of basin. Coming at you 12 hours later into the garage. She's still making some noise in here, but not nearly as bad because we dropped the frequency down a little bit more for our sweep. So let's see if the treatment has fully broken in our subwoofer here. Go ahead and turn down the volume. Give it the bacon biscuits test on the back of the hand. Oh yeah, that's not too bad guys, barely making biscuits. And shit, if they would just rate this thing at like five to 700 watts, there would be half as many problems as we're having because we all know what really happens when you give it a thousand watts. So now the next step, we're gonna as quickly as possible increase the gains to get our true 1000 watts. We're gonna be doing some SPL burps, so we want as close to rated power as possible. Hovering at 500, so let's increase it to a thousand real quick and then turn it down. All right, right there, that should do it. We're right at around the 1,000 mark, and that is what our gain looks like, a little more than halfway. So what do you say? Let's see how loud these puppies can get. We'll call it quits for today and resume tomorrow morning with our 10, 12, and 15 inch SPL results. Let's get this show on the road. We got our subs sitting up here on top of the roof, facing away from the sun to keep them relatively cool. And we're gonna do all of the metering right here on the dash, sealed up, all windows rolled up. And I'm gonna try my best to film with just these two hands, these two cell phones. The top one is our test frequency at 40 hertz, click apply. And the bottom one is our SPL meter. Now I gotta say something. This is not just some cheap app from the Apple or Google Play Store. It's an actual device that pairs right there and it costs about 400 bucks. Let's reset our meter and make sure we're turned up all the way. All right, guys, the moment of truth, the version two K9 12 inch size SPL test sealed up on the dash. Here we go. 139.59.6, there we go. But, oh man, that's like a DB less than the version one right out of the gate. You guys remember last year we pulled like a 140.6? I wonder why that is. I kind of have a suspicion though. Remember how the excursion was slightly less on the same power? Maybe it's because it needs just a little tiny bit more juice. Get everything all reset down here, do it all over again. We just increase the power a tiny bit. Make sure she's maxed out and let's see the results. Here we go. Point zero. That is like four tenths higher than the V1. And during that run, we were pulling 1,227 watts. So yeah, that little bit of extra oomph with our power did bring us above and beyond our version one test for a better SPL score. I'm gonna reposition this sub box to make it a little more optimal for SPL. 
We got the box at a nice angle here into the trunk, creating a nice little pocket opposite end of the meter. You can see it right there on the dash and the port is right over here. So that's technically the furthest we can get away from it. Now this is the first time I've ever tested the box like this. You gotta remember this was my girlfriend's car. So I didn't have just like free reign of it until now. So let's go ahead and see what this box position does angled into the trunk. All right guys, max volume, let's do it. There. I thought our thing was skipping, but look at that. Almost a full DB just from angling the box, guys. Box position is crucial. Granted, I wouldn't do like subsonic suicide runs or like average music runs at full rated power, but like I said, if you just kind of disregard what they say on the box, it's not so bad. Locked and loaded, ready for some burps. It'll be pretty interesting to see how this prefab box does with the same format we were doing. Sealed up, 40 hertz. Hey, look at that. 103 decibels from closing our trunk. Get a fresh reset and crank the volume back up. This is the version two K915 in a prefab box. All right, let's try 40 hertz. Whammo. 137. I mean, 139.7, look at that. Not quite as loud as our 12, but remember, that's a custom ported box with a nice efficient aeroport. port. Maybe if we place the port just a little bit closer to this boundary right here for a little bit more loading. Let's get that, there we go. Yeah, something like that maybe. Now we're just about six inches away from the edge of the trunk. So let's try that on for size and see if that increased the SPL any. I'm not even gonna bother resetting it. amazing how much box position makes a difference apparently there's a nice little area for some loading back there on that boundary and boy oh boy it makes a difference we're pulling just over 1100 watts and on short bursts there seems to be whoop, no problem with that it's just when you play constant bass at 1100 watts that you'll have problems but isn't that what people want so there's the official spl scores for the 15 inch sub and here's what i want to do next you guys remember from the earlier part of this video when the 15 started to stink up after 55 seconds of playing i think i love her by gucci well we're gonna play the same song on the same wattage for the whole duration it's like a three minute song so hopefully we'll be able to get some longevity out of this thing even though i'm pretty proud of it for taking the short burst but it's rated for 1200 watts rms which is a continuous rating so we're gonna treat it as such and see what happens after a full length song after all that's usually what people do right listen to the whole thing all right here goes nothing dj slow and throw bad guys there she goes all right turn that shit down actually I'm gonna turn the car off because that's on a on a relay so okay guys you saw that we were basically hovering back and forth between like 900 to a thousand it was peaking up into the RMS range but there's no way we were seeing 5,000 watts max over there and that's what this thing is rated for I don't believe that it would really enjoy a 5,000 watt smack in the face, but hell, you gotta take it with a grain of salt, you know what I'm saying? So like we've been saying over and over again with these subs, yeah, you can do stuff with them if you treat them properly, but don't expect them to live up to the expectations on the paperwork, because as you saw, it's just not the case, guys. We're uh, one minute 
in 18 seconds. So now I'm thinking back on the beginning part of this video. I'm super glad that I stopped at 55 seconds when we were inside the garage because any more power and duration, it was just gonna go up in smoke. I gotta get out of here because I'm gonna get freaking carcinogenic cancer in here. Scratch Didlioso completely seized. Look at that. See you later. We'll wrap up the SPL testing with the 10 inch K9 and also a prefab box. So let's go right back into it. 10 inch K9, let's see what she can do. 138, 134, I thought we were gonna hit the 133.9. But I mean, that's not terrible, but to be honest, I don't really think it liked 40 hertz. So I'm gonna try like 50 hertz, bam. There's the benefit of letting your burps go for a good duration because we jumped up, what, like friggin' over a tenth of a DV just from letting it go for about two seconds. There we have it, guys. A full rundown of the 10, 12, and 15, ending off with the 10 at a 134.3. To tell you the truth, I'm really not too, too disappointed with the SPL scores. I'm just disappointed with the longevity of the coils. It seems as though the, the problem is still there. Yes, they technically will take a thousand watts, but if you want to play a three minute song or just any average length song, you might want to dial that down a little bit, especially if it has a constant bass line. You know, all those bass lines that we love the most. So now we'll head back to the house and touch base with a fellow YouTuber who has been testing these woofers as well. Big D Wiz, old school car stereo. So we'll go ahead and see what he has to say about all this and give you guys our final word. Oh no, what have we done? You big dummy. I'm not sure what we've done anymore, but looks like disaster struck on both channels. Just finished Derek's video and things got pretty interesting. Woo. Let this air out a little bit. Luckily, he only did about 15 seconds of RMS wattage for his 10 and 12 inch bench test, so there's no problem there. But later on in the video, things got a little bit more hectic when he played 500 watts, just that much power, for a minute and 36 seconds. Starting to smell, a little bit of smells. He got the infamous stink stank stunk on just 500 watts. And then he boosted it up to a thousand watts. See if we can handle that CE rated load. And it only lasted one minute, just like ours, which was just about the same. That was about a minute. I'm seeing some smoke may have let out the magic dust. But he was actually able to get a little bit more life out of it for 13 more seconds at around 2,500 watts. It started at three and then dropped to about 2,200. We go. Long story short, these three inch four layer coils do not want to see 1000 watts for any extended period of time. And check this out guys, something very interesting I found on another subwoofer. This right here is a coil taken from a subwoofer that is rated for 850 watts. But do you notice anything a little bit different? The winding height is 16 millimeters taller than this K9. That means there's that much more conductive material to absorb the wattage. But it's strange that this sub is rated for more power than the sub that has more conductive material. I just don't get it. But somebody in the design room knew something was up because on the newer coil, they increased the winding height to 41 millimeters. So the V1 is 36 millimeters tall and the V2 is 41 millimeters tall, but it's still just not cutting it. The mechanical to thermal ratio is way out of whack. But either way, the short life that they do live did manage to pull us some decent numbers. So there we have it guys the full rundown of the Rockville K9 subwoofer from start to finish. I hope you guys learned something from this video and can stay on the lookout for possible things like this that may be too good to be true. You never know. So here we are today, uh, ending the video off with a, a giveaway that could go sour, who knows, but we're still gonna do it. This 15 blew up, this 15 blew up, 
but as long as you know what to do, we're gonna give you guys a 15 and just try to keep it dialed down a little bit and you can have some fun. Uh, they sent it over to me as a, as a courtesy because of all the problems I had. So I'm gonna give it to you guys and hopefully you can be responsible and not do what we did in this video just for testing purposes because when it boils down to it, someone who buys a 1000 watt subwoofer or even a one that says 5000 watts on it, you should expect to be able to put that amount of power on it for your favorite song. Be sure to check us out on all the other social media platforms. And if you liked this video, be sure to slap a thumbs up, subscribe and become a member on Patreon if you wanna help support this because I got like 250 hours invested into this video right now. So this is EXO signing out. I'm sorry for the long outro, but there was a lot to be said in this video. Thanks for Derek for collaborating. I'll talk to you in the next one. This is EXO signing out. Okay!